In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the air-to-air -air radar for the JF-17 while in intercept mode. Before we get started, let's take a look at the primary controls we will be using. To change mode, we will be using T1. To slew the radar cursor around, we will be using T5 slew, horizontal, and vertical. And to designate targets, we will press T5. If we hold T5, we will also get a narrow scan focused on where our cursor currently is on the radar scope. This can be very helpful for spotlighting the specific target that is hard to get with a standard scan. If we press and hold T4, we can IFF targets. Changing the elevation of the radar is done with T6 radar antenna elevation up and down. On the stick, we will primarily be using S2. Aft will decrease the range, forward will increase the range, left will cycle modes or targets depending on the state of the radar, Pressing S2 will reject targets, leave single target track, or refresh the MFD if no targets are locked. And finally, S2 right will change the azimuth. Okay, let's start by switching to intercept mode by moving T1 to the up position. When we do this, it will automatically set the air-to-air -air radar on the center MFCD and make it soy. The radar page displays a lot of information and will change depending on the mode we are in and whether we have a target locked. For now, let's just cover the basics. We have three primary radar modes available in intercept mode. We have track wall scan, range wall search, and velocity search. We can manually select them by pressing U1, or you can cycle through these modes with S2 left. For now, we will stay in TWS. We can put the radar in standby here, or we can silence the radar here. The control page gives us a few options for setting up the radar depending on what modes we are in. I'm not going to go over this in detail, but feel free to play around with these settings on your own. I will press the declutter button to clean it up for the purposes of this tutorial. Moving down the right side, we have our radar range that we can increase and decrease. We can also do this by moving the TDC to the top or bottom of the radar display, or by pressing up and down on S2 when the radar is soy. Below our range, we can change our pulse repetition frequency, or PRF. This will be different in different modes, and you might need to change it based on your target's aspect. We'll be covering this more when we start using the radar. Moving up the left side of the radar, we have our elevation bar scan at L5 and our radar azimuth at L3. These are very important for adjusting where your radar is looking for fast target acquisition. The more focused you can make your search, the more likely you are to find your target. And finally, below our radar scope, we have some information. We have our aircraft speed, we have our weapon status, we have our heading, and we have our altitude. If you find you've changed too many settings on your radar, you can reset it by going back to nav mode and then back into intercept mode. This will give you the default settings for intercept mode. Okay, as we move our cursor around, you will notice that there is a bearing and range changing in the bottom left corner of the radar. This is the bearing and range from your currently selected waypoint. This can be helpful, especially if you set up a waypoint for Bullseye. This will allow you to quickly reference Bullseye calls. In this case, Bullseye is waypoint 2, so I'm going to set that up. As we are moving our cursor around, you will also notice there are two numbers to the right of the cursor that are changing. The numbers next to the TDC indicate the minimum and maximum altitude that your radar will be searching at that cursor location. This can be very powerful when used in conjunction with your HSD data link information. If we know the contact's altitude and range, we can then tune our radar to look in that space with a much tighter tolerance, therefore allowing us to find targets fast. If our elevation is not set right, targets will not show up or they can drop from the scope. Use the radar elevation up and down to change the elevation of where your radar is scanning. That covers the basics of the radar, so now let's lock up a couple targets and look at some of the changes that will happen. These two targets here are moving away from us, so let's change the PRF mode to medium and lock both of them up. With two targets locked, we now enter dual target track mode. The radar will stay focused on the high priority target, or HPT. The HPT will have a circle, while the second priority target, or SPT, will be a filled triangle. You can still move your cursor around, but you will not be able to change where the radar is looking. However, you can still change the elevation bar scan and azimuth of the radar, if needed. To cycle between the targets, use S2 left. 
You'll also notice now that IFF is boxed. When you lock a target in the Jeff, it will continuously IFF. If you wish to IFF without a lock, you can hold T4. And remember, IFF is only as good as the people using it. If friendlies don't have their IFF on, they can return as unknown. On the bottom right, we also have information about our HPT. From top to bottom, we have our range, our impact time, our relative speed, and our target aspect. Along with this information, we also get min and max range shoot cues, no escape zone, control aiming point, and the ASE, or allowable steering error circle in the center of the radar. As our target aspect changes, we may need to change PRF to maintain long. Medium PRF is good for targets that are cold or moving away, and high PRF is good for hot targets, or targets that are moving towards you. In TWS, we only have medium or high options. Now you can see the current target is flashing. This means that the radar is about to drop lock. You can change your elevation bars or PRF to try to maintain lock, but in this case, I'm just going to let them drop off. Switching to RWS, you'll notice that it is very similar to TWS, but we gain a few extra functions. First off, you'll notice we have auto as an option for PRF. This can be helpful, but don't rely on it to track your targets all the time. We also have some other sub modes now. If we lock a single target up, the radar will switch to SAM mode or situational awareness mode. While in SAM mode, we can switch between automatic awareness and normal awareness. Basically, in normal awareness mode, you will be able to adjust some of the radar settings, but in automatic, you cannot. Play around with these modes if you want, but normally I really don't find myself changing these too often. As with TWS, if we select a second target, we will enter dual target track mode. Information displayed is the same as it was in TWS. In both TWS and RWS, selecting an already locked target will enter single target track mode. Now we have a sole focus on one target. This can be good if you are struggling to maintain a lock, but it will also alert the aircraft that you have it locked. For this reason, STT is only really suggested for use when absolutely necessary. Our final radar mode in intercept mode is Velocity Search. This mode is good at finding targets in a head-on aspect. If you select a target in this mode, it will go straight to single target track. I have occasionally used this mode if I'm having a hard time locking a hot target, but honestly that is pretty rare. And if a target is close enough, it's easier just to switch to one of the dogfight modes, which we will cover in another tutorial. Now let's put all this to use. Let's lock up two targets and make sure we are in dual target track mode. Let's take a look at the HUD information provided while we close the gap. On the left, we have our mock speed, weapon status, and radar mode. On the right is the same information we had on the radar for the HPT. We have our range to target, closure speed, aspect, and below this we have the time of flight. This is an important one when using SD-10s. Once an SD-10 is launched, this will change to time till active, or TOA. This indicates how long until the internal radar of the SD-10 will go active. It is important to maintain lock for the duration and even longer if possible. In the center we have our allowable steering error circle just like we had on the radar. There's also the control aiming point and a target box or TD box. The target box will have an arrow on the left, bottom or right side depending on the range to target. If it is on the left, you are within max range. If it is on the bottom, you are within the no escape zone. And if it is on the right, you are at minimum range. We've got ourselves in a bad position here. So let's disengage, get some separation and do a proper engagement. While we are getting set back up, if you want to learn more about radar, check out the manual that comes with the JF-17. It can be found in your install directory slash mod slash JF-17 slash docs. Also, Chuck's guide is another great resource for learning the system. I will often reference these two when I forget how something works. Okay, now we are in a much better position for an engagement. Let's get two targets locked up and start closing in on them. For the first target, we are not going to line up our control aiming point in the ASC. However, being these are just drones, it should still be an effective shot.
Now we switch to the second one with S2 left, and this time we will line it up, and we will wait until we are within the no escape zone. By doing this, you are much more likely to hit your target. There's a lot more to the radar, but this should get you to grips with the basics and using it for BVR engagements. Hit the like button if you made it this far and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.